Hello, Aviv. Hi, Tina. How are you? I'm fine. And you? I'm great. I'm enjoying <laughs> floating around with all my paintings around me. <laughs> I love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Aviv, in the exhibition, we present your latest painting series in which we encounter speculative nature inhabited by grotesque beings and creatures with big eyes who stare out of the image facing the viewer. What is the series about? So the series is about the relationship between humankind and nature. But I took a more existential approach, thinking about when we are in nature, there is this ideal of this is where we're supposed to connect and find the true self. Like we came from nature. So once we're back in nature, we're supposed to feel this elevated and spiritual moment. But I feel there's something about nature that's rejecting us and causing us conflict within ourselves as well and with nature. So this existential idea of going into nature to find ourselves, but do we really find ourselves? And what we do find isn't necessarily peaceful and harmonious. There's some kind of rejection or feeling that is eerie, bizarre. That is why I use this like, creatures that are human-like and we find this connection with them but there's something a little bit off-putting weird grotesque like you said and they're becoming one with nature they're dissolved by nature but it's something that's devouring them it's not an harmonious united experience Being, yeah no, yeah, yeah and that's why they all face us why they look at us yes yeah, so us. Exactly. So the imagery of the eyes that's repeating throughout the series, it's a sense of connection that you look at something and they look back at you. But once you remove the eyes from the image, it becomes abstract. So thinking, is this connection even there if I remove one element and the whole picture just dissolves and changes? So is the connection even real? Is it really reassuring? Uh, yeah. That's why, yeah, and for me, they're like vessels, these creatures, so I pour meaning into them with each changing series, because they've been introduced in my work in the last several years, so for this body of work, it's nature. And why did nature become such an important topic for you, or the relationship between humankind and nature? It's kind of an intuitive search it's not that i come up with a topic and then i think about how to illustrate it it's more just these images that come up to me and reappear and then i mold it as the series progresses so for this one i was thinking about the history of art as well just like the usage of flowers in memento mori kind of trajectory and then I started thinking about looking for meaning, looking for ourselves and just like how we introduce nature into that. And obviously with climate change and everything that we're encountering <laughs> constantly, it's kind of hard to escape that. But the search is always from the inside out and reflecting on thoughts and feelings and then this, this in out motion, like in the work itself. Yeah, exactly. It feels like it speaks directly to my inner self, to like on a meta level. It's intense being with your works, I have to say. And luckily, it's not all like <laughs> climate change based or negative, but your work is very poetic, very beautiful, very mystical. And I particularly like the titles you give your paintings, like For All the Fire That Blazed So Dark For Us, or and who knows if the flowers in my mind, they are very poetic. They are also very cryptic. How do you find your titles? Um, for each body of work, I find a series of poems that reflects what I'm trying to talk about. So for this one, I use Charles Baudelaire's Flowers of Evil. So each painting is not an illustration of the poem, but I go through. So before I start, I start reading and then when I title my work I kind of comb through all the poems in the collection and things that stand out to me I write down in a notebook and then when I look through my work I think what the emotion or the 
feeling the kind of bubbles when you look at the <laughs> painting and match the title to the painting, but they're opaque as well. Like you said, they're mysterious. They try to add meaning, but they don't necessarily really give you the key to understand the work. I like leaving a lot of space for the viewers to bring their own narratives. So the same as using repetitive imagery, like the eyes or snakes or flowers with this specific series. It's the same with the titles. You feel it's something that will explain, like language, give you a key yeah. to understanding the work, but it also creates a sense of like something that like is opaque and again, like giving you the sense of bringing you in, but pushing you away. So you can bring your own thing, but it's cryptic, like you mentioned. So it's a big part of my process as well. It's important to me. Yeah, maybe you can tell us more about your painting process by describing one particular work of the series or of the works we're exhibiting, how it For came sure. into to existence. Of course. I start all my painting with an abstract ground, and then it's like a Warshak ink block test. I recognize <laughs> shapes and I pull them out to the surface. And it's again like finding meaning within shapes and injecting your own meaning into a shape. And then usually I work on a series as a whole. So it's not like all the paintings are around me, but I do try to create relationships between the paintings. So for instance, these two over here, they were created as a diptych because they're facing each other, but they're like kept at arm's distance as well. And then I just shape out the painting and then it becomes more defined. And because I work on a series, I try to push each painting in a different direction. So I do try to keep them together in the space and see how they react to each other also in terms of composition, color. They create a whole universe that's like cohesive. With this approach, you create a universe which is very immersive. And this is why I love that we could install it in the virtual space to also create also this kind of immersion in a graspable way the viewers of your work. You work as a painter. Did you ever exhibit in a virtual show before? I think I exhibited with a show you curated a while ago, but it was very initial in terms of what virtual exhibitions were. Like having this experience of an actual space that's interactive, but also is an echo of what's in the artwork. So the figures in the paintings float and the painting themselves float. Obviously, it's impossible to do in physical <laughs> <laughs> space so I really really enjoyed this experience of the paintings behave as the figures it's something really unique and the fact that they relate to one another in this virtual space and they are speaking about artificial nature nature that couldn't exist and they're floating around in this immersive fake nature landscape and you can approach them up close and you can see how they relate to one another is something really unique it really opens another way of thinking about my work as a painter i never deal with any like vr or virtual spaces so it's something really unique for me that i never had the experience of like doing before it was really cool Awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy that you say this because, well, you trusted me with the hanging. <laughs> I suggested something and I'm happy to hear that, <laughs> that you, you're happy with it too. Yeah, I really appreciate your approach as a curator. And I think you have such a unique vision and you really use artworks as your medium, I feel, as a curator and you build this entire universe. So for me as an artist, I feel my work ends when I finish the work, but what the vision of the curator wants to bring or how you contextualize the work, I think it's really important. And it's not my place to interject. Like, obviously I can give my input, but I really trust you. You curated my first solo show ever. Mm -hmm. I've been working together for several years now. So obviously I, give you like a free hand also you have mm -hmm. the vision of the entire show which I do not have so yesterday when we had at the opening event and I saw how all the work came together and all the different approaches and different artists you picked mm -hmm. it looked amazing and it was really interesting to see my work 
being contextualized alongside these artists that are dealing with virtual reality and more post-internet and thinking about the post-human in a different way than I do. So it was really exciting. Thank you so much, Aviv. That is really great. Yeah, one of my um, approaches in the different shows I do is to discuss the conditions of the physical and the virtual and to state that both realms have their own conditions and mm -hmm. can use whatever realms we want to use for the conditions we want to evoke, whatever is the goal, we can choose the space for it. And both worlds have their advantages or also disadvantages, depending on what you want. Now that you have a little experience with uh, virtual exhibitions, maybe you can let us know your, your personal view on the advantages or disadvantages of exhibiting in the physical world and the virtual world. For me, as someone that creates objects that are physical, I feel every painting is a body. When I stand in front of a painting in a museum, like I stand in front of the same painting that Philip Gaston stood in front of when he created it. There's something really spiritual about that experience. But like I said earlier, we are working under the loss of physics. I can't make my paintings float around. Like it opens a different way of thinking about work that the work cannot adhere to the laws of physics or you can enter physically into an artwork, I think it's something really powerful and activates a different emotion. And it's spiritual, obviously anyone, anywhere with a proper internet connection can visit the show. And when it's a physical exhibition, you need to go <laughs> and experience it in person. So I think both are equally important. Being a painter, my instinct to say all work needs to be in person but after experiencing this exhibition it was something really unique and open up a whole new world <laughs> literally so it was really really cool thank you Aviv. that's really great i'm happy to hear well so what's what's next for you can you already talk about the upcoming shows or the next ideas for the next painting series I'm actually going to participate in a residency in Portugal called Pada. So there I will create a new body of work. This body of work was like really intense to create. So I'm kind of excited to step out of the studio and create in a different context where, alongside other artists. I think it's really important to not only work in solitude, but to work with different people, like in proximity as an artist, it's kind of rare because usually you're by yourself in the studio. I don't know what's next <laughs> in terms of bodies of work. I'm like excited to find out because it's, I feel I said a lot with this body of work and I'm excited to move on to the next one. Sounds great. Thank you, Aviv. It was a pleasure Thank having you, this conversation. <laughs>